Hello everybody, MD Polo here. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very special pistol. It is the Phoenix Redback. This is a pistol that is handmade in Switzerland by the finest craftsmen and I can tell you that it is perhaps the finest pistol I've ever had the privilege of shooting and holding. Before we get into the Redback, I'd like to send a big thank you to all the doctors, nurses, first responders that are helping to take care of all the sick people out there during this virus outbreak and the quarantine period, which in my, in my lifetime is unprecedented. I also want to ask for your patience during this video because, as you know, I try to film all my videos on a one take only with a little edit here and there, simply because I don't have the ability to or the knowledge to do all that editing that some other channels do. But I wanted to ask for your patience because there is so much to say about this pistol that I do have notes in front of me and I want to make sure I cover everything. Along those lines, this pistol has so much, there's just so much to offer, so much quality that I could easily spend an hour on it. But YouTube viewers tend to spend five, six minutes on a video, even though we make 20, 25 minute videos. So for this, I'm going to tell you on a tabletop review what I think about it give you as much information as I can in a short period of time. And at the end of the video, I'll give you the history on the Redback on Sphinx, because that's where this came from. If you choose to listen to that, it'll be at the end of the video together with a close-up video of the pistol like I do at the end of my other videos. So here it goes. The origin of this pistol, of course, is Swiss, and it comes from Sphinx all the way back to 1876. So now we fast forward to 2018 when the founder of Sphinx parted ways with Chris, the US company that eventually purchased Sphinx, and began PHX Phoenix AG. Phoenix, fittingly enough, is rising from the ashes, and in this case is rising from the ashes of Sphinx. The Redback, which you have in front of you, is a 9mm competition pistol, which was developed by Phoenix, and it is an improved version of the Sphinx 3000. It has several new features and, save, and a great fa uh, facelift. I'm trying to speak today. The pistol in front of you, the Redback, is also produced in a carry optics version. And it also, they also make another pistol which is called the Fusion. And the Fusion is very similar to the Sphinx SDP, which is more of a carry duty. This is strictly and geared towards a competition market. There is only one distributor in the US and it's called the Attic Imports. Attic, like the attic in your house, A-T-T-I-C, Imports. I cannot link to them on YouTube because they just don't like that kind of thing. But you can look it up the Attic Imports, so I want to thank them for putting this pistol into my hands. They are the exclusive distributor of the Swiss made Sphinx firearms, I'm sorry, Phoenix firearms. Phoenix is produced in Interlock in Switzerland. And while I talk, I'm going to let you take a look at this because it is an absolutely exquisite pistol. And this has been safety checked, by the way, so no need to worry there. The Phoenix Redback is a pattern, of course, you can tell towards um, the CC75 or ZZ75. But this represents the highest expression of craftsmanship coupled with the best materials and the most attention to detail. I'm going to just keep turning it and walking it around so you can look at it as I read from my notes. So some of you perhaps will say right away that this looks very similar to a shadow, a CZ shadow, a shadow 2, or even a tang folio, a tangy. And you may be right, however, this one upset in every way. Quality, craftsmanship, and materials used. Like I said at the beginning, this can probably be said that it is the finest pistol that I ever he held, production pistol, that is, that I have ever held or fired. The finish, fit and finish, the attention to detail, is just exquisite. The Redback comes in three models. The regular, 
light and ultralight. And the difference being that these are all steel. Everything is steel in this model that you have in, in front of you. This is the regular. The light comes with steel in the upper part and aluminum on the bottom. And the ultralight comes with steel, aluminum, and then polymer. So you can pick and choose how you want your red back. So now let's dive into the pistol. It's a nine millimeter. Now there's talk that there's a 40 Smith & Wesson in the works, but for now this is a nine millimeter pistol. This particular one is all stainless steel. You can get it in double action, single action, or double action only. This is a, a double action, single action, but you can have your preference on how you want this configured. It's a 17 plus one. It's got snap caps. So just so you know, it's got two snap caps, metal mags, 17 plus one. It is a heavy mother. It weighs, it comes in at 2.92 pounds. And let me tell you, just sitting here or standing behind the tripod doing this, it, it gets heavy. 2.92 pounds, empty. The mags are steel and it comes with four mags, 17 rounds each. And you, if you have ZZ, ZZ mags or Tangfolio mags, you can use those as well. It comes with this range bag. And in the range bag, it comes with Sorry about getting in front of the camera, but it's the way it is. Comes with, this one came with three. Others I've had, I've heard that it comes with four mags. This one came with three 17 round mags and it comes with a cleaning kit that of course is caliber specific and it's all, it's really nice. It's all brass, beautifully done cleaning kit. Inside, sorry, it's hard to do this around the tripod. It comes with a, a nice owner's manual. And it comes with the target. The target was done at 25 meters, which, let's see if the math is correct, it's about 27 yards. And look at that. So not bad at 27 yards. Nine millimeter. So there it is. So that's what it comes with. It's a nice range bag. You can fit three pistols inside of the range bag. So let me take a look here. So we talked about the weight and the mags and the accessories that come with it, help with the focus. So now let's take a, a little deeper dive into it. The slide, as I mentioned, is all stainless steel. It's got beautiful front serrations and back serrations, very positive. A little bit on the sharp side, but very nice. It's got grooves on top of the slide, which guide you straight into the fiber optic site, which is also steel. You can get it with red or green, whatever your choice is. The rear site is a Bomar steel site, fully adjustable for windage and elevation with a serrated back. So it's very nice. It's got, let's see if I, the camera will allow me to do this. It's got a very nice sight picture and just the right size between the front and the rear sight for just, there you go, if that's working for you. I just think they did a fantastic job with the front sight and the rear sight and the amount of space that is in be on the, on, to the side of each of the post. So there you go, really like that. 
Now, this, this pistol, you can get it, like I said, cut also for an optic. And one thing they did that I think is very, very smart, do you, you see right under the site, you can see there's a hole, it's, it's carved. I'm trying to see if the light will catch that. You see this cutout right here underneath that is underneath the slide? Now, this particular model, of course, is not cut for a red dot, but the one that is, you install the plate, the mounting plate for the red dot would be right here. The red dot attaches to the plate, but what makes this special is just with the removal of a couple of screws that come in that model, you can remove the red dot with the plate. Then you do not lose your zero. Whenever you mount the plate back on, the red dot, dot is already attached to it, so you'd never lose your zero. And I thought that was ingenious. So very nice. It's got an external extractor that you see there, which I think it's an improvement over the extractor that was on the Sphinx 3000. So letting you take a look at the frame. I'm sorry, closer look at the, at the slide, because now we're gonna move down to the frame. The frame is also all steel, and it has a 4.547 inch barrel with polygonal rifling. Now the slide to fit finish is absolutely fantastic, and it is something that you will find in high quality 1911s, if you can see that. Everything just fits incredible. Now following the lines of the ZZ, or ZZ, the frame, you see right there, how the slide rides inside the frame. So that allows you to have a low bore axis, and the fit is just phenomenal. There you go. On the frame, you will also find a manual safety, which is ambi, and it is wide. This particular model, you, see, you can see the difference between the two safeties on the left side and on the right side. On the right side, it is much wider and it gives you a very nice resting point for your thumb. So it's fully ambi. You have your slide stop, which is only on the, on the left side of the gun. You have an extended mag release, which is reversible, serrated. And it is in the perfect position, at least for me. Let the focus catch up. I have medium sized hands and I can reach it without breaking my grip. And that is fantastic for me. It's very positive, and like I said, there's snap caps, nothing else is in the gun. So very, very nice. The rail, it does have it does come with a rail. So it's a five-slot Picatinny rail. Now on this, if I'm gonna use this for target, for competition shooting, I don't think I need lights or toys or whatever else you want to hang on the top of and the front of this, but it does come with a five slot rail for those of you that do. Now any markings that you see on the gun is just going to be the Phoenix, Swiss made on this side, serial number would be in the back here, and on the right side of the pistol it will just say red back and nothing else, which I like. Now you have a very wide trigger guard, so that'll work just great for gloved hands or for big hands. It's got serrations in the front. You got a high cut under the trigger guard, which allows you to get really deep into the gun high up on the gun with the extended beaver tail. You've got 
nice serration um, serrations in the front and on the back very nice now if we check the mag then you can see that it's got a flared a slight mag well but just enough to aid in the reloading and you can see the again the attention to quality just if you run your finger across this you don't feel any of the seams it's just completely flat nice edges of your magwell in here and it just creates the right angle and enough of a lip here that it keeps you just glued to this gun it's got g10 grips these are pretty aggressive if you run your finger your thumb up and down it you just you feel the the abrasive abrasiveness of it and if you can see the detail you see how it, it the grip comes and then it's angled into the rest of the pistol i'm hoping that there you go, the focus is there. See that? And then the serrations in the front. Just the, the attention to detail is absolutely spectacular. Now the grip angle is something that I liked quite a bit. Reminds me of a 1911. The gun, as heavy as it is, it just, the balance is perfect. You don't feel it top heavy, you don't feel it back heavy. It just kind of drops into your hands and it stays there. And even if you were to do you know, one-handed shooting, it doesn't feel like you couldn't handle it because of the weight. Very, very nice. Now, disassembly of the pistol is just like a ZZ, ZZ. You see the, the little notches back here? You just align those notches just like that and then on the other side and I'm not sure if the focus is working right now because I'm using both hands just pop that just like as easy come on this side remove it let the focus catch up there you go release it and off it comes now I want you to try to listen to this okay no jokes guys it's truly, I know people say this, but it's like glass with butter on it. It's absolutely spectacular. Now let's take a look first. Here you got a non-captured steel guide rod. Let the focus catch up. And take a look at this. It's like a mirror in there. There's no machine marks anywhere. We got the barrel. Now, when I got this pistol, it had, I'm told, about 30 rounds. This is the pistol that was used by the A to get ATF approval. And since then, I've put in about 300 rounds through it. And there's more to come, but that's what's been through it so far. It's got a really nice thick barrel highly highly polished feed ramp there you go and now taking a look at the inside here no tooling no machining marks anywhere just beautiful and coming in into here What I want you to see is that it's got an integrated buffer. Now most people, most other, not most, but other competition pistols, you either have to uh, install one, but this, this already has one built in and it is easy to, ex to change, to remove it and to change it. And again, everything's been polished. It's just beautiful. Look at that. And you see, you got the rails, so the frame rides inside like a C set. It's beautiful craftsmanship. Now, to put it back together, and as you see, this got a, quite a bit of oil in it. So now that I've been playing with it, you're going to see some 
smudge marks. Sorry about that. It's hard to do this around the camera. So now it goes in the rails. And we're fine. Now let's take a look at the trigger. The trigger is very smooth. And let's put a snap cap in there. Drop it. And double action. It's going to be eight pounds, at least in this one. And you pull, you pull, and you're right there. Boom, you're at the wall. Instant wall, it pulls, breaks. Very smooth, there's no grit, there's not nothing. Just very, very smooth. And again, if we want it to go, very smooth. Now single action, it ejects the snap cap. And you're gonna be right there, did you see that? Drops. It was just absolutely amazing. Let me show you again. Boom. It's just absolutely amazing. Double action. There we go. The single action, it's it's pulling at three pounds, but I can tell you that it feels less than that. Double action at eight pounds, single action at three pounds. As I mentioned before, the balance of this pistol is just beautiful. When it sits in your hands, it just, the vertical, it just sits vertically in your hand. I don't know how to explain it. It just drops straight into your hand, even though it's so heavy. So what's next to talk about this? The price. The price, and I'm sorry, now we've got sm oil smudges all over the place. The price of this pistol comes in at $3,800. Now, some of you people may say, my goodness, that is so expensive. I can get a Shadow, a Shadow 2 by a, for a lot less. Well, yes, you can. You can also either buy a Rolls Royce or you can buy a Ford. Uh, we've had this conversation also with the um, with Sphinx. When people were saying, well, I can buy a Sphinx SDP for $1,200 or $1,000, or I can buy a CZ P07 for $450. Well, yeah, but you're getting what you're paying for. This is truly a race gun. This is truly a high-end competition. If you want a Rolls Royce, this is what you get. You know, you can also get a uh, uh, some of the Sphinx 3000s right now are going for $6,000, or a little bit north of $6,000. You can get the STIs for a lot more than that. You can get the tank folios for a little bit less than that. So it depends what you're looking for. But this, I can tell you from Phoenix Firearms, the Redback is truly a spectacular pistol. If you're looking for something unique, something Swiss made, this is absolutely spectacular. So if you want to stop there, stop there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the Attic Imports for sending this. If you want to hang around a little bit longer, I can, I'm going to give you some of the history behind the, the Redback and through uh, by, from Sphinx. So again, thank you for putting up through the one take only of the video. So here we go. Now for the history of the Sphinx and how Sphinx, Sphinx uh, became Phoenix, we have to fast forward to 1995 when a gentleman, his name is Armand Landot, Landot, purchased Sphinx with the idea to build a high quality and performance pistol for the dynamic shooting market for the competition market. And in 1996, he launched the Sphinx 3000. That was one of the most successful, successful pistols in the competition circuits in Europe, and then it made, they made its, its way into the U.S. shores. After that, they developed the Sphinx SDP. Now, the SDP was, was designed with the input of the Swiss military and the Swiss police, and it was designed for carry and duty purposes. The Sphinx SDP had such success and demand that in order to grow the company and meet that demand, Sphinx needed the input, both cash and manufacturing facility, 
of another large company, so they joined with Chris USA in 2012. Chris helped them increase that capacity, but after working together for about three years, in 2015, Chris and Mr. Landau parted ways, and Chris kept the Sphinx name. Now, this is all my take and what I've been, ever to been able to gather from what's out there. So, after that, Mr. Landau decided to grow another company and do it better than they did with Sphinx. And out of the ashes came Sphinx. Uh, from, from the ashes of Sphinx came Phoenix. Sorry about that. So still located in Switzerland, still in Interlaken, like I said, one of my favorite towns. S originally Sphinx, the Sphinx has a very special meaning to Mr. Lendo. And of course it came from the Greek mythology monster, which is the woman's face, face with a lion's body and the bird's wings, which later became the logo for Sphinx. After that, and after what happened with Chris, it was only normal that the evolution of that logo would be the Phoenix, the rising from the ashes. In 2018, Phoenix AG was born, or reborn from the ashes of Sphinx. The first pistol they developed was the Redback, and it is an improved version of the Sphinx 3000 with several new features and a great facelift. The Redback is also produced with a carry optics version. After that came the Fusion, which is an updated version of the Sphinx SDP, which is also available in three versions, the Standard, the Long Barrel, which is 17 rounds, the Tactical, which is Short Barrel and 17 rounds, and the Compact, which is Short Barrel and 15 rounds. Now, what I would like to see from Phoenix is a Fusion that is in the Compact size and in 357 SIG. Now that would be interesting. So here you have a team of professionals, a team of craftsmen of the highest quality that broke away after the failure of Sphinx, started their own shop again in Interlaken, Switzerland. Mr. Landau brought the finest craftsmanship with him and took it to the next level with Phoenix. So take a look at them. I'm telling you it's one of the finest handguns I've ever held and shot. And I hope you enjoyed this review. Of course, as always, I went longer than I should, or but I could have spent a lot more. So we're at 28 minutes. I want to thank you for watching. Any questions, you can reach out to me on YouTube in the comments below. I hang around for a few uh, days after. But once the comments get a few levels deep, it's very difficult to track them on YouTube. So if you want to ask me anything, you want to shoot me a question, or just check out some of the other content, you can look me up on Instagram and on uh, Facebook. I also post other content on Instagram that I cannot post on YouTube, so please follow me there. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, until the next one, God bless.